And he joins us now live. Good morning, Senator. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. And it's not just Governor Thank Chris you. Christie, morning, Governor Jeb Bush, also uh, a, a super PAC of his recently released an ad basically calling you no show Rubio. Are you continuing to serve the Florida residents who elected you into office? Are you doing the job they elected you to do? Well, it's interesting that, that for example, uh, Chris Christie's a funny guy, but he's never in New Jersey. He's gone half the time. And the reason why I'm not in Washington right now is two reasons. One, Washington's completely broken, and that's why I'm running for president. Because these votes that are taking in Washington, they don't count. We vote to repeal Obamacare, but unless you have a president that will sign it, it's not going to matter. We want to strengthen our military, but unless we have a president committed to it, it won't matter. Washington is completely broken, completely out of touch. Half, more than half the things that happen in Washington are just for show and for talk. And as a result, that's why I chose we're going to run for president. Because only if we can change the direct, we can only change the direction of this country with a new president that will move us in the right direction, not this disaster that we have today. But what's happening, I think, unfortunately, with some of these folks that you've mentioned, they're growing increasingly desperate and increasingly nasty, and that's okay. I'm not running against them. I'm running for president. After eight years of Barack Obama, this country cannot afford to elect just another Republican, another person who's been waiting in line for their turn to run for president. And this country most certainly cannot afford Hillary Clinton because we can't for afford four more years like the last eight. Where do you see yourself coming down in Iowa? Right now, if you look at the real clear uh, politics average of polls right now in Iowa, you're in third place at 12 percent behind Cruz and Trump in second place. How do you uh, level the playing field there with a month left? What are you going to do to try to close that gap? And can you? Well, we're on the ground today here in Iowa, and I can tell you as you talk to voters that many of them have expressed a preference, but not a firm commitment. In essence, these are folks that make up their mind very late. The second point I would make is I've never paid attention to these polls, whether we're up or whether we're down, because in these early states especially, voters like in Iowa take very seriously their responsibility. I feel very positive about our organization, about our message, about our campaign. It's pretty straightforward. We have the greatest country in the world. Barack Obama has systematically tried to change it over the last eight years. I'm going to be elected president. These folks will help me. And we are going to change the direction of this country. We are going to re-embrace the principles that made America great. And we are going to once again have a president that doesn't just say America is the greatest country in the world. We're going to have a president that acts like it. And that's what I'll do. And I'm looking forward to it. Senator, speaking of Iowa, you've had a travel partner that's made news recently in Representative Trey Gowdy, who endorsed you yesterday on the trail, uh, raising a lot of eyebrows and, and folks pointing to that as, as a good sign for your campaign. What was the nexus of that endorsement? Well, I've known Trey for, Trey for a while, but I have tremendous admiration for him and the work he does in Congress. You talk about someone that holds people accountable. You talk about someone that is conducting oversight in a way that's good for this country. Trey Gowdy is the epitome of what you want to see in a public servant, and we're so grateful to have his help. And I'm glad that he's joined our effort. This is a serious election here. I mean, this, is, this cannot be just another election. This election, literally, we are choosing what kind of country America is going to be in the 21st century. We are a great nation in decline after eight years of this disaster named Barack Obama. And so this election is the most important election in my generation. And I'm glad we have someone like Trey Gowdy alongside us, because when we win this election, we are going to turn this country around. We are going to re-embrace free enterprise and limited government. We're going to respect the Constitution. We're going to get rid of all the horrible things Barack Obama's done to our economy and our national defense. And we're going to leave our children what our parents left us, oh. the greatest country in the history of the world. The current frontrunner, though, doesn't agree with you uh, on Trey Gowdy. In fact, here's what Donald Trump tweeted yesterday after he heard about the endorsement. He said, I hope Trey Trey Gowdy does better for Rubio than he did at the Benghazi hearings, which were a total disaster for Republicans and America. What do you say to that? <laughs> well, he wanted to make uh, Trey Gowdy his attorney general not that long ago. Obviously, anytime you don't support Donald Trump, he finds out a reason not to like you, and that's fine. Uh, the bottom line is this election is about serious things, like the future of the country in the world. This is an America where millions of people feel left behind. They don't even recognize their own country anymore because of what Barack Obama has done to it. We're going to change that. That's why I'm running for president. That's what Trey Gowdy's helping us do. And of course, we're excited about having him on our team. And Congressman Gowdy will be on the program in just a few minutes, so we'll be asking him about that. Okay. Also, uh, Senator, there's a, a, a big article in the New York Times this morning on the front page. It's reporting that training camps, Al-Qaeda training camps, are popping up around Afghanistan. And all week long, we've been talking about how the Taliban is growing there um, and how Bagram Air Force Base, the Pentagon, is pressuring um, leadership to try to keep that open beyond 2017. What would a President Rubio do in Afghanistan? 
Well, first of all, that's one more example of why Barack Obama is a disastrous president, especially on foreign policy. This is part of his strategy of retreating from the world, and of accepting America as a weaker country and having less influence. His retreat from Afghanistan prematurely is what's created this opening. And by the way, it's not just al-Qaeda. ISIS is growing in Afghanistan. It's been underreported, but ISIS's presence is growing in Afghanistan as well. They are also in a competition with the Taliban. To, to recruit fighters over. What we're going to do, we're going to target terrorists anywhere in the world where they're found. We, we are going to have, we're going to rebuild our military. If there are terrorist camps that are plotting against Americans, we will find them and we will destroy them. And if we capture these terrorists alive, they're getting a one-way ticket to Guantanamo. And in Guantanamo, they're going to tell us everything they know about plots past, present, and the ones they're planning for the future. Senator Ruby, earlier in the program, just briefly, we asked Senator Rand Paul about reports in the Wall Street Journal about the NSA surveilling conversations between members of Congress and the Israeli government surrounding uh, the deal around the Iran deal. How do you feel about the fact that conversations with members of Congress could have been swept up with NSA surveillance? Well, I, I want to be very careful. I'm on a member of the Intelligence Committee, so I'm, uh, you know, obviously I want to be very careful what I say about information of this kind. Obviously, people read that report. They have a right to be concerned this morning about it. They have a right to be concerned about the fact that while some leaders around the world are no longer being targeted, one of our strongest ally in the Middle East, Israel, is. These are all concerns, and they're legitimate. But these are one of those complicated issues when it comes to intelligence matters. We have to be very careful about how we discuss it, especially since there's a press report that I don't think gives the entire story. And uh, not defending the Obama administration, I actually think it might even be worse than some people uh, might think. Hmm. But this is an issue that uh, we'll keep a close eye on in, in the role that I have in the Intelligence Committee. But I'm not trying to be evasive, but I want to be very careful in a national broadcast like this how I discuss these sorts of issues. All right, Senator Rubio in Iowa, good luck to you there, and uh, have a great New Year. Thanks for joining Happy us for New a few Year. minutes this morning. Thank you. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Senator.